Hello and welcome. Try this problem on your own, and then when you're ready, press play and we'll solve it together. Okay, so I think uh, this question is really tough. It's got a lot going on here. Just look at this, right? We've got a table. We've got an equation. Then we've got the average rate of change, which is essentially slope. We've got y-intercepts, we've got maximums and roots. So we've got to analyze a lot of stuff here. So I'm going to kind of cut to the chase and talk about what I think is the fastest way to solve this problem, and that is the graphing calculator. So first of all, let's deal with g of x. That's the one where we have our equation. Go to enter it by pressing the y equals button, clearing off anything is in there. Negative, this is the negative button, x squared, press right, minus x, plus 6. So we enter this, and then we graph it. Now, your graph might be off. Uh, it might show perfectly, uh, but I would hit zoom standard to reset it if it's not working. And then you see the graph. So um, we want to know what the roots of this thing are, because they're asking about roots. We want to know what the intercept is, and we want to know uh, what the maximum is. So the calculator is going to help us speed along here. Hit second trace. would find the maximum. That's choice 4. And it's asking for a point to the left and to the point, a point to the right of the maximum. So I highlight the cursor to the left of the maximum, hit enter. I go to the, the right of the maximum and hit enter again. And I get, okay, this maximum negative. And you can see it's about negative 0.5 with a height of 6.25. So the maximum point for g of x is the point negative 0.5 and the height, sorry, was 6.25. And what is the max for this, this table right here? Well, it's hard to tell, right? We've got all these values, and it looks like 9 is the maximum, but we don't know if it's the vertex of the table. However, I'm going to point out, if it's going to reach at least 9, that means 9, if it is the maximum, is still higher than the maximum of the other graph. But also, if it's not the maximum, there will be something above it, right? Because this graph is symmetrical somewhere, it reaches the point, it reaches the point 9, and it seems to be the vertex, right? Because everything seems symmetrical around it. But even if it wasn't, right, even if it wasn't, there would be some maximum higher. So we know the maximum of n of x is greater than the maximum of g of x. So we know that this max is larger, which is why we can cross out uh, choice 3. It says the function g of x has a greater maximum. Now, if you want to find the exact maximum for this table or the vertex and you're not sure how to do it, what you could do in the graphing calculator is go to stat, go to edit, and then enter all the values like I did here into your two lists. All the x values into list 1, all the y values into list 2. Then if you go to second, stat plot, you can graph the stats that you just entered. I'm going to turn my second plot on because my first plot is set for a box and whisker. So I hit enter, then I turn it on by hitting enter here. I'm going to leave it as a, as a um, scatter plot. And then if I go and turn off any other functions I have, we already entered that in one for y equals, I can go to clear that off, go to graph, and I can see right the points I just plotted right here. If you can't see them, hit zoom 9. And then if you hit trace, you can go along and see, right, these points right here, see what they are. And you can see that the point 0.19 is the vertex. I was saying that I can tell it's the vertex from the table because the other points are uh, symmetrical. That means that they have the same heights on either side of the vertex. For example, this point 0, 0.08 is, has a height of 8, and this point 0.28 also has a height of 8, and they're both one to the left and one to the right of the vertex. It's symmetrical. If I need an equation for these points, I can hit stat, now that I recognize it's a parabola, they did tell us it's quadratic. But when you know it's quadratic or a parabola, you can use quadratic regression, choice five, for the data you entered, and you'll get an exact equation. So this might really help us. Let's hold on to it. It's saying y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and a is negative one. So write this down. y equals negative one x squared. So now we have an equation for this table. That's gonna be useful. Plus bx plus two x. And then finally, plus 8. So this is actually helpful for a lot of reasons, but one of them is that we can compare 8 and 6. These numbers are the y-intercepts of the parabolas. And if you're not convinced, I'll show you that in a moment. And that tells us that the y-intercept of this table 
8 is higher than the y-intercept of the equation that we have for g of x, which is 6. So we can cross out choice 2. There's only two choices left. And <clears throat> um, they look at their roots and the slope between these intervals. So let's just go back to our graphing calculator and just kind of set everything up. Now that we know the equation for our quadratic regression, we go over to y equals and we enter both equations. Right Now we can really start to compare things on our graph. So I'll re-enter the first equation. I shouldn't have actually deleted it. I should have just hit enter on the equal sign. That would have turned it off. Right? Uh, and then plus 6. Okay, that's the first one. Second one, negative x squared plus 2x and then plus 8. Now we have both of our graphs. Um, so I'm going to turn um, the first one off. Right, go to the equal sign. Oops. And I don't want to see both graphs in there. That'll confuse me. Hit enter. That will hide this graph. Right, it won't show it now because the equal sign is not highlighted. Then I'm turning my stat plots off. Right, we're not graphing stats anymore. We're graphing equations. If I go to graph, I can now see the parabola for n of x. And here, uh, if you want to find the y-intercept, you know that, and you can see it, you don't need to do this, but I'll just show you how it works. If you want to find the y-intercept, that's when x is 0. That's this point right here, 0, 8. The calculator can also find it for you. If you hit second trace and go to value, if you enter in a value for x, I'm going to in 0, it will give you the corresponding y-value here, which is 8, the y-intercept. Now, how do we compare the roots, right? Uh, these two equations. Well, they give us the roots for n of x. That's those are these points right here, and the height is zero. And the sum of the roots for n of x is four plus negative two, right? Four plus negative two. That's two. Is that greater than the sum of the roots for g of x, right? Well, what are the roots for g of x? So you can factor g of x if you'd like, or since we have it set up on the graphing calculator, I'm going to turn off the equation for the second parabola. We don't need that and use the equation for the first. Hit enter. Go to graph, and the roots are where the parabola crosses the x-axis. So we hit second, trace, and I want to find the zeros. Those are the roots. And it to, it's going to help us estimate them. So here, I go to the left of my root, go to the right of my root, enter, and guess, and it gives me the first one, negative 3, comma, 0. And they're interested in the x value, so the first root is negative 3, the second root, we scroll over, second, trace, oops, sorry, and again, we want to find a zero value. Go over to the right, looking at this root right here, and I'm going to pick a point to the left of that root and a point to the right of that root. Hit enter to the left, to the right, hit enter, and enter again for a guess. There's our second root, two, zero, and we're interested in the x value, two. So negative three plus two is negative one. And this is the answer, right? The roots for n of x are larger than the roots for g of x. Let's just cover the um, average rate of change, though, so you understand what that's all about. Over the interval negative 1 to 1, the average rate of change for n of x and g of x, what is it? So for average rate of change, uh, let's do a quick sketch. It doesn't matter really what the parabola looks like here or how curvy your function is. If you're finding uh, the average rate of change between negative 1 and positive 1 on the x-axis, these two points, you're essentially finding the slope between these two points. You're finding the slope of this line. So this is really a slope question. So I think this, this is the first question that might be easier to do by hand, uh, and not in the graphing calculator, although you can do all of this by hand. So uh, how do we find the average rate of change of the table? We'll do that first. They said it's between x is negative 1, so here, where x is negative 1, right? This one right here, and positive 1 here. So our slope is, we're going to find the slope between these two points. 9 minus 5 is the difference of the y values over 1 minus negative 1. And that's just 4 over 2. So the slope for n of x is 2. The slope for g of x, we have to plug in uh, the corresponding values for x. First we find g of negative 1. Then we find g of 1, and we find the slope between these two points. If I plug in negative 1 uh, to g, I'm squaring negative 1, right, and then multiplying it by negative 1. So that's just negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 times negative 1. That's negative 1. Minus x, so it's minus negative 1, or plus 1, plus 6. And that gets us 6. Now if I plug in 1, I get um, 1 squared, which is 1, times the negative sign out here. That's negative 1. Minus x, minus 1, plus 6. So that's negative 2 plus 6, which is just 4. 
So what's our slope here? Well, we find the difference of the two outputs, the y values, 6 minus 4, over the difference of the x values, negative 1 minus 1. And that's just 2 over negative 2, which is negative 1. So the slope for g of x is negative 1. Uh, and this is not true, right? The average rate of change for m of x is not less than the average rate of change for g of x. In fact, it's larger. All right, so just to recap, you can do all of this in the graphing calculator. Uh, if you wanted to find the average rate of change, you can go to any parabola you're looking at, and you can go to second um, calc. And if you want to know what the function's height is at a certain value, you pick value. So if I want to plug in negative 1, hit enter, I get 6 for the height, just like we got here. Or you can plug in algebraically, and then you can find the slope between them. Um, the only step I think that we uh, did not talk about at all on um, how you do it by hand, um, if, I, if I remember correctly, there's a lot going on in this problem, is the roots. Remember to find the roots of a function, you just factor it, set it equal to zero, and solve for x. So you can go that route as well. All right, hope this helped.